if though was spelled T-H-O-U-G-H one time and T-H-O-W the next time and T-H-O the next time, we have a hard time recognizing it as though. And, you know, if I'm reading a page and there are two or three spellings for that word, this is annoying to me. So we want our words to be spelled the same way every time because it eases spelling. The printing press did more to standardize it than anything else. In nomine patris, et fili, et spiritus sancti. It was by a series of accidents, first of all, that the variety that we now know as international standard English developed in London in the late 14th century. And this had to do mainly with reasons of population, demography, the government being in London, the printing press being in London. And this was right in the middle of this upheaval uh, in the long vowels. And just by virtue of printing hundreds or thousands of copies of the same text, there's going to be standardization willy-nilly. The technology of uh, printing and the technology of foundries and of typesetting and the distribution of typefaces, that also enacts a standardization. And of course, once you have print and the proliferation of a lot of written artifacts, that helps to create standardization as well. When Caxton began printing in 1476, uh, it's as though he took a photograph of the language in mid-stride and captured it at that moment. The accident of, of the printing press, uh, which in England uh, served to free spelling uh, in, in the 15th century, so that you have these uh, bizarre uh, uh, spellings. It was just at the wrong moment to freeze English. It was neither the pronunciation of the, a century before or the pronunciation that, that developed uh, a, a century later into modern English. So it is interesting that the printing press came in at a time when the language was changing as rapidly as we have ever known it to change. But there's another kicker to this as well, namely, what kinds of type fonts did the early printers in England have? Caxton, first English printer, came from the Netherlands. What he brought with him were the type fonts for Dutch. So not, and Latin, because obviously Latin texts were being used. So you didn't have an a, and you didn't have a th, and to carve these things, you know, took someone who was a really good metalsmith. So why bother? Why not simply use the type fonts that you have, which is exactly what An example of an accident is the loss of letters, uh, several letters that were lost out of the English language that represented actual sounds. And they were lost simply because the printers um, came from the Low Countries and the, 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 uh, the actual um, typeface came from the Low Countries where they didn't have those letters or they had lost them centuries before. And so uh, an example I think that will be familiar to most people is uh, you'll be driving along in, uh, through a shopping district and there'll be a cute little shop that says ye old tea shoppy. Uh, well, the Y um, in Old English would have been a, a letter called Thorn, um, which was being used up in the 15th century. And uh, when they started printing, uh, the Dutch didn't have a thorn. Uh, so they used something that looked like a thorn, which was a Y. And so no one ever, ever said ye old tea shoppy. They always said the old tea shoppy, um, an, an, an accident of print. When the predominant source for type starts to be Dutch foundries, then Dutch foundries aren't particularly interested in adopting what they do for English usage. So to some extent, it's why bother with two systems? Because the only people who are writing probably knew Latin anyway. So you don't want to have to learn two different sets of orthographies. They just dropped out the extra stuff that you needed to distinguish English from Latin, largely because we didn't have a set of type fonts that could easily represent those symbols. You'd have to make some new ones. You didn't need them for the Latin texts you were printing. They hadn't come over with Caxton. 
who would bother? We do making additional uh, characters for two reasons. First, we'll cut 50 more of them. No, there, there's a cost involved in it. You would then have to have two printer's trays because you don't want to say, ah, oh, I'm just going to pick the ev out of this one, but use the main tray for everything else. Grand scale QWERTY. <laughs> yes, it was a mistake, but here we have it, and I'm not going to give it up. In this kind of literate culture, highly literate culture, it's easy to forget that the system we have learned is a system that is based on a series of accidents that result in layers of complexity. And it's by studying that history that I am detached from what I have learned almost intuitively or naturally or just as a matter of course, to realize that this is a highly artificial construct. So that the moral that I would take away from this kind of knowledge is to disabuse myself of the arrogance that I might feel for having mastery of the medium and replace that with a kind of sympathy and humility.